Hi, this is Kenneth Wong, Senior Editor for DE247 or Digital Engineering 247. From parts in space telescope to powertrains and cooling systems inside cars, the application of 3D printing is growing. This is also an industry that is expected to grow 18% in 2021, according to a report by Smart Tech. The search for better, faster printing methods lead to one area, saving time and materials by reducing or removing altogether the support structures needed during the print process. This is particularly relevant to metal printing. In the case of 3D Systems, one of the leading AM systems makers, the key is in the direct metal printing method, or DMP. The company's no-support approach works in conjunction with its design and analysis software, 3D Expert. Here are excerpts from a recent talk by Michael Mann, application development engineer from 3D Systems. Just a quick overview of the DMP technology itself. Um, in essence, it's a laser marking and a powder deposition system um, with an extremely high atmospheric control. That's DMP technology in a nutshell. So um, basically what you have is a, a, a laser system with a scanning system um, and a powder deposition feed. So um, most of you might be familiar with DMP technology. So it's kind of, forgive me if I just kind of glaze over some of these things, but um, in essence, this laser powder bed fusion process with an extremely high atmospheric control where we're um, very, very, very low oxygen content um, when we're building, which enables us to uh, have a very high throughput, high repeatability for this. Um, so moving on to the surfaces in DMP technology, like any other additive technology, um, we're, we're taking a 3D part and we're slicing it into uh, a 2D layers and a stack of 2D layers. For, for um, most geometries, what we can say is that you're dividing the par geometry into three different surfaces, an up-facing surface, the middle-facing surfaces, and then a down-facing surface. So a down-facing surface would be where you know, you're closest to the build plate, you have these low overhang angles from these steps. So how does this all relate to um, the process itself? So basic concepts here of energy density, um, all of the laser powder bed fusion is driven on this uh, energy density equation. You have a laser that's melting powder. Um, so the energy density is the amount of that energy put into the powder per surface area. So from this equation, you have all these parameters that influence this. So your laser power, for instance, our system uses a water-cooled 500 watt um, laser with a specific wavelength that affects um, parameters, your scan speed, your hatch spacing, and your layer thickness that you're actually penetrating into the powder bed. So specifically focusing on scan strategies for down facing angles, we can change the scan strategy that we're using for these down facing surfaces to kind of alter what our output is. So we can use a different scanning strategy based on um, angle-based detection. So we can choose which angles we want to apply down-facing parameters to. These down-facing angles can then be separated and scanned at a different time in a different scan order. You can generate shorter vectors and you can create local virtual volumes, which I'll show you later in 3D Expert, that we can use different parameters where you might not be able to support or you might need a different output of your uh, process. So that really brings us into the no supports development and it's basically powered by our 3D Expert software here. So what is 3D Expert? Um, it's an all-in-one integrated um, additive manufacturing workflow solution. So what does that actually mean? It's a CAD-based hybrid software where you can import native CAD parts from SolidWorks, you can import STEP, IGES, any native CAD file, you can bring it in and it allows you to maintain all those surfaces instead of decimating it into triangles or some other um, non-parametric you know, parametric CAD body. What this allows you to do is then directly implement supports on a CAD body and then provide 
Um, you can do any sorts of modification if you need to. You can offset, you can uh, mark, you can do different things to the CAD model for the additive process. So it, it basically encompasses this entire flow. So you can automate this, um, you can do um, simulations, you can optimize your print strategies based on those simulations. So it's a very powerful tool that enables us to be able to apply these different parameters and apply all this, these strategies to specific applications. So what we wanted to do was do a demonstration of this with the stator to increase the overhang angle that our DMP process can build um, for these demanding applications where you can't have supports um, or you can you, you really are unable to get into these areas. So what we wanted to do was increase the overhang angle, overhang angle um, reduce the transition appearance between the technologies where you have similar and up, up and down facing surfaces. Um, this way you don't have a marked difference between a supported face and a non-supported face, which enables you to have a more uniform and automated post-processing so the part looks much more uniform. So there's multiple ways to approach that, whether that's abrasive flow, chem etch, tumble, uh, shock peening, any of those um, automatable um, support uh, post-processing techniques. So just a real quick rundown of the Traditional supporting strategies we would see. This is a quick demo. We have a part in 3D Expert. Um, it's a section of the stator blade. Um, basically, what we see here is that um, you have a part in here. It's the CAD body. You can select phases. So a traditional support strategy was in, in 3D Expert. It's really easy. Um, basically, you're generating a region and you're applying some basic hatching support to this uh, overhang angle. So now you have that overhang angle, you go ahead and then you apply some um, basic wall hatching. So this would be one way to apply, quickly apply supports that would then need to be manually removed. So the first aspect of the real no support is actually a development that was done earlier um, internally at 3D Systems utilized in some other applications where we use a what's called a thermal blade. It's basically a contactless support. What it enables is it, it enables you to put uh, a support for low angle down facing surfaces and uh, thermal management for leading edges. So the very lowest end of the part that's gonna have a high concentration of heat, you're gonna basically use this thermal blade as a heat sink to dissipate that heat through a layer of powder um, to the thermal blade. So the optimization there is the right amount of gap to have. So you have an easy removal with no physical contacts to the part. And when you do that, there's no actual contact remnants to remove. So there's no nothing physically touching the face that needs to get removed off, but there is that little gap, which does kind of pop off. So it enables us to not necessarily touch the part, but it enables that thermal control. So a quick demonstrator here, to create that thermal blade, we can do this through a variety of options in 3D Expert, but really what we wanna do is use this low facing area to create a thermal blade. And now here we can just select that face because it's a CAD surface. We can then apply a solid support to it. And then we can drive this offset very easily right here with the uh, penetration feature. So it, it enables you to quickly Kind of create these thermal blades in 3D Expert to do these kind of um, to do these kind of heat sinks um, for different geometry for different types. You could do this on multiple faces. Um, it's really dependent upon the user and the application and how you want to approach that. So the second half of this equation here is the multi exposure settings. Um, the multi exposures used in conjunction with this thermal blade. And this is the multi-hatching strategy that we have. I discussed before some of the scan strategy. So what we want to what we want to set out to do is to devise a strategy to consistently build these regions with low overhangs, where you can't design out the overhang or you can't de-support the overhang. Um, so, like I said, this was built on previous developments, such as the thermal blades. Um, the down-facing improvements that we've made to parameter sets, and then the multi-exposure regions. So right here in this picture, you can actually see the thermal blade, which is in orange, 
um, protruding down from the side of the part. And then this multi, um, multi hatching, multi exposure area. So we've defined this in the 3D Expert where we can actually um, come in and create a multi exposure region. Same thing, just like a CAD, just like being in a CAD um, environment, you can do this multiple different ways. So you can create regions in 3D Expert here. You could actually create virtual volumes, or you could even create a volume on the CAD body itself to be able to get these multi-exposure regions. So right here, we can actually just click on the region and create an automatic multi-exposure thickness, which is a virtual volume, which drives that multi-exposure support. So once you've developed these parameters, how do you really actually go about making sure that what you've done is correct. <laughs> and that's kind of where our DMP monitoring software comes into play, where we can use these really powerful tool sets to ensure that whatever parameters we're doing are also doing exactly what we want. We've changed the energy density, we've changed the, the scan speed. How is that going to affect our parts real time? So what we've done here is, you can see these two images here with uh, the heat map and then the actual deposition photo of the stator where you can see that um, on this leading edge here of that fin where the heat's, um, the thermal blade is, you can see that we had a nice cool leading edge, right? That blue right around the contour that shows that we're, we're making sure that we're controlling that heat in that region and that we're not over melting the outside contour of our part where we could start to see some of those effects with um, unintended porosity or uh, loss in dimensional accuracy. So being able to monitor this stuff in real time is extremely powerful when you're looking at a specific application or you're trying to do parameter development. And this monitoring software allows us to do that with our DMP ProX machines. So what are the results we found? You can see those small little blade pieces Basically, what we've done was we scaled the technique um, from small samples to a large application successfully. Um, we successfully printed it down to about 20 degrees without supports, um, which even less when we're actually using thermal blades on that progression line or that leading edge to um, have no trace on our, on our surface finish there. So we've also shown that we have acceptable surface properties. We're seeing that you know, with shot painting, with both post-processing, we're getting that kind of uniform surface finish that we're looking for, for those, um, those rough down-facing surfaces where we have, you know, the ability to print them um, and we're getting comparable down-facing surface roughness. For the full length talk, check out the link to the event page 